Hello YouTubers and scale modelers and welcome to another episode of Model Mayhem Mania. In this video we're going to visit a model that I completed about 11 years ago, the Monogram Big T. And let me tell you something, it is big. You'll see in the, um, the build photos that I've got very few of actually, um, the actual size of this thing, it is a behemoth. It's really awesome. So I'm gonna run you through everything you need to know about um, building a model that's this big. And there's quite a bit to it. It's, it's one of the more difficult things you can do. Um, having said that, the actual kit, the monogram kit was absolutely fantastic. Not one sausage wrong with it. It just went together beautifully. Um, if I had to whinge and complain, they moulded the, um, the wheels in um, black plastic, so it took quite a bit to cover up the black and make it red. So a little tiny trick for you is uh, use silver leaf first as your base, and then the red goes over it beautifully, which is something that I learnt making this model. Anyway, enough chit-chat. We'll get stuck into the build video. Okay, here we go with the build video. Um... So as I've stated in a previous video, I always keep my instructions, always have, probably always will, don't know why, just one of those things. Um, you can see there's a lot of, what, they're so old, they've gone brown, some of these ones, like, it's from 1990, what is it, 2018, you, you do the math, 28 years, something like that, I've, I've been keeping them my whole life, and it's been just thousands of them in there, and um, yeah, really cool, so I've always got good reference material, just in case anything goes wrong, whatever. Um, yeah, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to focus on the um, Big T um, diagrams instructions, which as I mentioned before, is a, a fantastic model. So you can see there, all the parts are very clearly displayed. Hang on, I'll just get a pointer, I might want to give you it easier. They are, trusty brush, beautiful. So yeah, all the parts um, clearly displayed there. There's three versions of this kit that you can make within these instructions as well. I preferred the uh, big T, so that's the first part of the instructions, as you can see. So mostly what I'm going to talk to you about is the um, composite glues that you can use to assemble models with. Um, this is a very big model. I, I can't give you the actual dimensions, but it's sort of in the order of uh, 14 inches by sort of yeah, 10, 9, 10 inches. It's a, a big model, maybe a bit longer than that, 15 inches by 10 inches, something like that. Um, so the, just the normal styrene cement isn't going to hold the parts together in, in the places that it is necessary to get a lot of rigidity and strength into the model. So for the chassis, for example, um, you really want to have a lot of good um, epoxy, two-part epoxy res, resin glue um, used for the uh, chassis. In Australia, we call it Araldite. In a lot of other countries, you can call it whatever you like. I don't know what it is. Um, I use the five-minute one because the 24 hour one, it just, it's mission impossible. You don't wanna be sitting there for hours and hours trying to wait for the glue to harden. This stuff hardens in five minutes, and once it's done, it's there for life. So this part in particular, all of this was, uh, I used the two-part epoxy glue, um, the front spring as well, and the spring perch were all glued together with epoxy glue. The front axle, was glued onto the leaf springs with epoxy glue. So all of the parts where um, you're going to need a lot of strength is where the epoxy is um, needed. These smaller parts, like your idler arms, those little bitsy parts, like your, your front rod holders, those sorts of things, you don't really need it. These spread parts, such as the um, front axle halves, you can just use the normal styrene cement. Of course, clean off the chrome, uh, do a test fit first, don't be too generous with the glue, keep it neat. It's a chrome part, you only get one shot at it, make sure you do it properly. Um, also, what else have we got? So all your radius rods, all that sort of thing, just a normal um, fit together. Some of these parts, are, they are big, but they just, um, they're so well engineered that you, you really don't need to worry about using Araldite to hold them together. Um, as was the case with the um, headlight bezel and the headlight bracket oh, fantastic fit together beautifully and that that makes for the a, a good modeling experience you know when the parts are that well made 
and they sit together beautifully just as, a, as they did in this model. You don't really have to worry too much about using um, composite glues. Um, engine block, same thing, just a normal styrene cement's fine. Uh, just those little parts here, styrene cement's fine. But uh, your front pulleys though, uh, there's a rubber band that goes around them, so that was something that I had to sort of use the epoxy resin again. It's a, a really um, necessary thing that that part stays dead straight. It's one of the main features of the engine. Of course, you need to put the extra time and effort into them. So, um, things like the rear axle differential, the jag diff, uh, the leaf springs, uh, epoxy, again, epoxy glues we used there. Uh, putting the bucket onto the chassis was another part that you know there's nothing to be left to consideration there you just you just got to try and do it as well as you can so take the extra time test fit it really well put the epoxy glue where you it can be easily hidden and off you go bob's your only martha's your uncle um normal styrene cement for the windscreen because uh, it's it's a very fine detail thing. Uh, you just got to be very very careful about how you apply it, and it's a, it is a fragile part. There's nothing, not a whole lot you can do about it. Thankfully, you can see where they sit into the uh, bucket. They're a really flat surface, and it fit together really well. So that was excellent. You just need a tiny little dollop of the styrene cement, and you're home and hosed. These uh, exhaust pipes weigh a ton, so. In terms of the, you know, a brick weighs, I don't know, two and a half kilos, whatever. It's, they're not that heavy, but they're pretty heavy given their size. And there's only a very small contact point for them onto the, um, the exhaust pipe braces. So the braces were epoxied to the engine block, and then the exhaust pipes were aerodited to the braces as well. So five minutes and they were there forever. But you just gotta line them up, make sure they're all nice and straight, and then let the glue set. The rest is child's play. So the other thing as well, I'll just show you quickly. You don't need to go out and buy anything for this model. So usually if you wanna add embellishments to a model, you wanna put the, you know, the hoses, the leads, all the rest of it, you have to shop around, or I've got a few places that I go to. But you can see in this diagram here, you've got the um, the radiator hoses come with the model, the distributor leads, the brake lines, everything comes with the model, which is fantastic. Saves you a lot of pain searching for parts. And on this page, you can see the diagrams there for the lengths that they need to be cut as well, which was absolutely awesome and dead accurate. So fantastic. Makes for an awesome experience for the model. So just before I run the build photos for you, I just thought I'd mention that... Um, from every model that you make, there's always something you can learn. And obviously, YouTube is a, just a fantastic outlet and inlet um, for you to learn the whole process and make better scar models. So I just thought I'd, I'd give you a quick look. So that's the uh, Spitfire that I made years and years ago. I don't even remember how long. 2003, I think I made that. Um, there's the Wildcat. There's that's on uh, one of my YouTube videos. Feel free to visit my YouTube channel anytime, Model Mayhem Mania. Lots and lots of build videos and more up and coming all the time. Um, that's a Sopwith Camel that I brush painted. So the Red Baron's spray painted, Sopwith Camel brush painted. Big difference. Um, same thing with the P38 Lightning, brush painted. But at, down the back there you can see the um, little M ME163 Comet uh, that's a flea market kit cost me five bucks but we you know we've been getting into the airbrushing been watching a lot of videos on YouTube on how how it all goes and what the processes are behind it and so on and you can see there that that model's just absolutely fantastic now I've come a long way with the model building and that's what I'm getting at every time you build a kit there is something there for you to learn so just sort of give you a quick look at the, how I've improved and how you as well can improve um, yeah using YouTube as your teacher fantastic way to learn new tricks yeah so just once again to reiterate um, this is a model I built I don't know how long ago years ago now um, and by all means it was a pretty good model nice and neat nice little paint job on it and so on it's not too bad it's pretty shiny not nothing wrong with it at all you know got the extra detail in on those little uh, hinges and door handles and so on 
So that's fantastic, but from what I've learned from YouTube, and I haven't made a video of this model, but just have a look at the, the difference that it makes, you know? And I've put absolutely every trick I know and have learnt from YouTube, from other YouTube scale modelers into this vehicle. And I can't begin to tell you how shiny it is, how beautiful it looks, and how much I learned making this model. And you can do it as well, believe me. All you gotta do is just try and learn something every time you make a model. So, for my experience, making the uh, Big T was composite glues. Making the Hellcat was using spray paints. Making the ME163 was using an airbrush, getting the finer detailing, layering effects, uh, detailing and that sort of thing. So, yeah, get yourself out there. Number one, thanks to all you scale modelers out there who share your information on YouTube. It's absolutely fantastic. Number two, learn and grow, people. The results are out there and they're there for you. You can do it. Anyway, I'm Uncle Smithkins. This has been Model Mayhem Mania. Smithkins out.